Voting Day is a, a story that takes place on a particular day and it's the 1st of February 1959 in Switzerland. On that day, Swiss men voted no to granting women the vote and then they went ahead and, and voted yes 12 years later in 1971, which is the anniversary we're celebrating this year. My book tells the story of four ordinary women from, very, from different backgrounds and uh, their lives are all connected by the fate of a foster child. I had the idea to do, to have this story about four women from morning until night on that day, passing from, from one woman's situation to the next and having them connected in some way. Once I did an interview with a, with a, with a women's rights campaigner from that era, her name was Martha Gostely. When she described her disappointment and the disappointment of the whole group on the day of that 59 vote, uh, you know, she, she just it really made an impression on me. The Other Daughter is a dual timeline novel set in 1976 and 2016. In 76, uh, Sylvia is an ambitious young journalist who is desperate for her big break at the newspaper she works for in London. She persuades her editor to send her to Switzerland to report on the ongoing women's rights movement uh, five years after Swiss women got the vote at federal level. Um, and at the same time, she discovers she's pregnant. Uh, then 40 years later, Sylvia's daughter, Jessica, um, has discovered a big secret about her birth. She decides the only way to really get her life back on track is to come to Switzerland and find out what happened to her mother 40 years previously. I didn't, at the beginning, set out to write about women's rights. Um, but at the time, uh, I suppose I'd been living in Switzerland a couple of years by then, and there were quite a lot of issues concerning women's rights and equality in the news at the time. And I just became really interested in it. Um, specifically, the women's liberation movement was sort of inspired by the um, 68 student riots and the liberation movements in America and elsewhere in the world. Um, and so I started reading up about the issues that were important to women in that movement, things like abortion, um, maternity leave, um, more nurseries, things like that. The research that got me uh, passionate about 1959 was uh, when I came across the book by Iris von Roten. It's called Frauen im Laufgitter, which means women in the playpen. And um, it's, it's just a really, really detailed uh, analysis of Swiss society at the time, which was a year before my book is set. The lack of voting rights is just, just this huge disgraceful fact that you can't get around that women ha in Switzerland had to wait so long to, to get, get the right to vote. But it's, it goes deeper and wider than that. Um, you're, you're talking about um, discrimination in the workplace, a few opportunities for, for training or for, for uh, careers of any kind, and um, a very, very rigid kind of traditional attitude towards gender, gender roles and what was the women's place and the man's place and the man being the authority in the home as well. So, so women um, didn't have the same rights within marriage, also legally, they didn't have the rights to their own money or to make their own decisions, sign their own contracts. It was definitely a, a harsher climate for women in the 1950s. Uh, ich fragen, was halten Sie vom Frauenstimmrecht? Ich bin dagegen. Warum? Die Frau gehört ins Haus. Sie soll Mutter sein und fertig. To bring about this reform, it, you couldn't just rely on a few, a few progressive men in Parliament. You had to actually have the agreement of the masses, of, of, of all men in the population, or a majority. And, uh, and, you know, and I wonder, in other countries, if men had had the final say, maybe women would have had to wait a lot longer everywhere else. The UK is ahead of Switzerland in terms of legislation, but that doesn't mean that attitudes change. Um, and I think, you know, there's still a gender pay gap in the UK. And I think in the 70s, even though a lot of the legislation had moved forward, there was still, there was still discrimination, there were still sexist attitudes, and you could argue that that's still the same today. There have been several um, female Swiss presidents, whereas the US is still waiting for one, the UK has only had two. So, you know, I think in some ways Switzerland's made great strides. I think no country is perfect, I think there's still a huge amount to do worldwide.